Uh, hey, what's up? Dan Fletcher here. Uh, so, I just kind of thought of the title for this. Um, what I'm doing sort of reminds me of, like, Let's Plays uh, for video games. So, I thought, you know, this is like a Let's Learn. Um, so, Let's Learn Ruby on Codecademy. Uh, yeah, I am still here. Let's get back to coding. Okay, uh, so where we left off uh, in episode two, we learned some basic things with Ruby, uh, just how to assign variables, uh, how to do um, like just basic math operations, and single line, multi line comments. Uh, so I guess this is supposed to be our first project in Ruby. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, what you'll be building. Uh, this project will help you create a small program that will read a user's input and correct his or her capitalization. Users can provide an almost infinite range of input, so it makes our lives easier as programmers to make their input standard before we do anything with it. Uh, so check out the code in the editor. We've added some new things that we'll be teaching you. Can you guess what it does? Hmm. Click to run and find out. Uh, okay, so let's maybe just go over this. Uh, I think they're probably using mostly what we learned from the last video. Hey, yeah, I am still here. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> print. Uh, so I. Uh, okay, so print. Print. We know. Um, just prints a line and. Here they're just creating a space. Uh, we'll find out in a second, I guess, how, how we get that cursor to show up. Um, first name equals gets chomp. So I'm guessing gets is probably like a. Uh, I'm guessing this is creating this uh, cursor, right? So we're um, it's giving us a prompt to enter in our name here in the console, maybe. I probably have to run it to do it run what's it doing it's thinking uh, okay I'll just keep reading through um, first name uh, we capitalize it we uh, print again uh, what's your last name we do this gets chomp thing to get probably get the user's last name we capitalize it we print what city are you from? Same thing, this get chomps, which I'm guessing creates that cursor. Capitalize it. Uh, what state are you from? And we upcase that. And then puts your name is. And uh, this I kind of uh, explored a little bit in the last video. And mentioned Ruby probably has a way to do it. I just didn't know what the syntax is. This is called string interpolation. Um, so we're just. Uh, Ruby's gonna insert, uh, or rather, it's gonna replace this chunk of code here with the value of first name, uh, and then same thing here. This gets replaced with whatever the value of last name is, uh, whatever the value of city is, and whatever the value of state is. I'm really not sure why this isn't running. Let's just reload this page. That wasn't a full reload, actually. Um, Hmm. Code Academy is tripping out a bit. Okay, so let's try running. All right, so I get the prompt this time. Uh, okay, so Dan Fletcher, uh, what city are you from? London, Ontario. Uh, Ontario. <laughs> okay, your name is Dan Fletcher, and you're from. London, Ontario, Ontario. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so this this part here is that that string interpolation we we're just talking about. Um, let's let's get on with the lesson. Uh, prompting the user. First, let's write the code we're already familiar with. In order to get input from the user, we'll first need to print a prompt on the screen. So the instructions say, print the question. What's your first name uh, to the screen? Uh, feel free to peek back at the first exercise. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, let's move on. Getting input. 
Good, now let's try something new. You may have noticed this weird little line of code repeated in our example. Some variable name equals gets.chomp. Gets is the Ruby method that gets input from the user. When getting input, Ruby automatically adds a blank line or new line after each bit of input. Chomp removes that extra line. Uh, your program will work fine without chomp, but you'll get extra blank lines everywhere. Oh, cool. Uh, okay, so declare a variable uh, first, first, first name uh, and set it equal to gets.chomp. Um, I'm just curious to see. Uh, answer. Just curious to see this new line. Let's do chomp. Uh, okay, so get start chomp. I don't know. It, it says it passed. It's definitely not working for me. Um, yeah, I definitely find Code Academy can be a little finicky uh, at times. Okay. Well, let me. Let me put this chomp back. I think if you run your code, Code Academy saves it, and then I'll just refresh this page again. Hopefully we don't have to do this all the way through. It's kind of annoying. Okay. Can I type? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I didn't, I don't get the difference. Uh, maybe it'll become clear when we do more um, input lines, maybe, I don't know. So hang on, sorry. Uh, gets is a Ruby method that gets input from the user when getting input, Ruby automatically adds a blank line or new line after each bit of input. Okay, so maybe, let's just, let's just move on. I'm sure this will become more clear. Um, repeat for more input. All right, now we need to repeat what we've done for last name, city, and state. Okay, uh, seems pretty straightforward enough. Add print prompts, variables, and get chomps for the user's last name, city, and the state province. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay, so print, what's your last name? Mm. Uh, last name equals gets dot chomp and this is I'm gonna play around with this a bit because I, I I think I know what the difference is um, what's your city uh, city equals gets chomp print uh, province or state and we'll guess we'll just call this state uh, gets dot chomp and I just caught a little typo over here gets dot chomp um, okay so what's it say as a variable for the user's last name city state for the state or province hint prompt the user to provide an abbreviation for the state or province, such as NY for New York. This will naturally lead us to use the upcase letter. Province, state, abbreviation, sure, whatever. Okay, so what's your first name, Dan? Uh, so I'm get, guessing gets.chomp is doing is because I have like another prompt, if I were to just do gets. I'm wondering if this prompt would just be on the same line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out. Um, let's rerun this. Okay, so what's your first name? 
Ah, oh, for fuck. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It doesn't seem to handle me just like uh, pausing or resetting the execution of code uh, very well. Okay. So my name is Dan. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I don't get the difference. Uh, I, th I thought, because I only use gets, that this would have been on the same line. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what's your city, province, or st what did I do here? What? Ugh, okay. We will uh, refresh again. Pretty sure this is just Code Academy, not me. Okay, Dan, what's your last name? Uh, Fletcher, what's your city? London, Ontario. Cool. I just want to put these little spaces in here too, because this just uh, makes it look a little cleaner in the console. All right. Anyway, we we passed. Let's move on. Uh, printing the output. As you might have noticed, Ruby's not really returning any feedback to us. We want to be able to see your string formatting in action. For this, we'll need one more new piece of syntax. If you define a variable monkey that's equal to the string curious George, and then you have a string that says, I took pound symbol curly brace monkey, closing curly brace to the zoo, uh, Ruby will do something called string interpolation and replace uh, that bit of code uh, with the value of monkey. That is, I will print, or it will print, I took Curious George to the zoo. We can do the same thing here. For example, first name, Kevin. Puts, your name is, first name, will print, your name is Kevin. Uh, let's use a syntax to print out the values of first name, last name, city, and state uh, using the string interpolation uh, syntax. Uh, cool. So, uh, your name is first name uh, last name whoops uh, don't want that uh, closing quote there. Your your name is first name, last name, and you are from city. State. We'll do that. Okay, so let's run. What's your name? Dan. I'm going to start making up names because it's getting boring. Oh, uh, what's your city? London, Ontario. So your name is Dan Fletcher and you are from London, Ontario. Cool. Uh, and that passed. Just curious. Yeah, okay. So uh, this is, like I, I was saying in uh, in the first episode, uh, this is like the difference between single quotes and double quotes in PHP. Uh, PHP, uh, to get string interpolation to work, you have to do double quotes. Um, for normal strings, uh, there is, there's no difference between single quotes or double quotes, like performance-wise, it doesn't matter. Um, apparently, Ruby uh, treats uh, string interpolation the same, so you have to use your double quotes uh, for the syntax to work. Um, and then actually JavaScript does have, so I, I said like JavaScript has no difference between single and double, and that's that's true, uh, but da uh, JavaScript does have, um, they call them template literals, which gives you string interpolation. Like you don't need these like hash symbols in PHP or JavaScript, you can just do it like this. Um, yeah, and then only difference is with PHP for regular variables, they have to start with a dollar sign, which is a little weird, but uh, I don't know. You get you get used to seeing variables like this. I used to hate that. 
kind of kind of like it actually because kind of, I don't know anyway back 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 uh, should be able to go next okay uh, formatting with string methods great now we've got our output but as you can see we haven't used string methods to properly capitalize everything yet um, so they have an example print this is my question answer gets dot chop answer to answer dot capitalize answer dot capitalize exclamation what I don't know uh, first we introduce <laughs> that's funny what is it doing over here um, <laughs> Uh, first, we introduce one new method, capitalize here. It capitalizes the first letter of a string and makes the rest of the letters lowercase. We assign the result to answer two. The next line might look a little strange. We don't assign the result of capitalize to a variable. Instead, you might notice the bang uh, or exclamation mark at the end of capitalize. This method, or sorry, this modifies the value contained within the variable answer itself. The next time you use the variable answer, you will get the result of answer dot capitalize. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so after each variable assignment, first name, last name, and city, add the dot capitalize exclamation, or some people call that bang method for state using the dot upcase method. Okay, okay. Uh, so first name dot cap little eyes I suck at spelling I had to look um dot no 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 uh, bang um last name dot capitalize bang and then do we do that for city too yeah city capitalize bang <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, for state, upcase. And then let's run. And of course, I'm probably going to have to refresh the page again. I think this is going to be a constant issue with at least this part of the course anyway. Um, okay. Dan Fletcher, my city is London, Ontario. Your name is Dan Fletcher and you are from London, Ontario. Okay, cool. So I actually, running through it, totally forgot to test that I could do a lowercase for uh, my name and the city, uh, but I accidentally did not capitalize the N here and it did it for me. So uh, anyway, Code Academy says it works which must be true, so let's move on. Uh, okay, great work, perfect. In just a few short steps, you've created your own Ruby program with real world applications. Uh, feel free to add to your program or change it as much as you like. Cool, sounds like I'm ready for a Ruby job. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I tinkered around uh, with all of this stuff enough uh, on my way to get here, so I don't think there's really anything I want to play with. Um, hmm. And I'm um, really just not in the mood to report any bugs because I have to actually look into why I think it might be happening. Uh, so let's just go to the next. Um, up next, control flow in Ruby. Uh, now that we know how to write simple programs, let's learn how to write more complex programs that can respond to user input. Okay, so it looks like that's the end of the second section uh, on Codecademy's Ruby course. So I'm gonna call that episode two. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, leave in the comments below. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you want to get notified for the next video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.